Hi, I'm Randy Robinson. Welcome to Life Today, a special digital edition. I am here with Miles McPherson. He's a pastor of Rock Church in San Diego, and he has a new book that couldn't be any more timely because, by gosh, we need to work this out. It's called The Third Option, and it is dealing with the hot issue of race. Good to have you. Good to be here. Nice to see you yeah. again. <laughs> yeah, no, this is great. I've been listening to you for a while, you know, since we had you on the show years and years ago. Appreciate, appreciate what you say because you to me are, I, you're, you're someone who speaks truth mm -hmm. with grace and love. Mm -hmm. And we could use a lot of that. So, yeah. so tell me about this book because you're, man, you're, you're stepping into it. <laughs> yeah, racism is a hot topic today. Uh, in my lifetime, it's never been so vocally, overtly divisive. Mm -hmm. And so a couple of years ago when I started writing this book, um, I kept saying, it's gotta come out now, it's gotta come out now, and it kept getting worse and worse and worse, <laughs> so it's yeah. the perfect time. Uh, background, I, I am mixed, obviously, my grandmother's white, and I have another half black and half Chinese grandmother, and then my grandfathers were black, so I, I'm mixed with black, white, and Chinese. I grew up in a black neighborhood and got harassed because I wasn't black enough. Mm. Went to school in a white neighborhood, got harassed because I wasn't white. But I played on football teams with black and white guys who got along. So I knew that obviously, you know, it wasn't all bad, but you heard the good, the bad, and the ugly of people, mm. but also the good. And a lot of my dearest friends were on both sides of the tracks, almost literally, mm -hmm. talking about each other mm -hmm. because they didn't understand each other, but I understood both sides. And now that I pastor a church that is like the United Nations and you know thousands of people, I know people can get along. God created us to get along. Mm -hmm. And in every race conversation, it's about us versus them. You kind of pick to choose a side. And every if you watch the news and whether it be the NFL controversy, the political controversy, the police controversy, yeah. you're always forced to pick a side against another side. Those are your two options. Mm -hmm. The third option is that we honor what we have in common. And you and I were made in the image of the same God. Mm -hmm. You want to have a family. You want to have fulfill your dreams. We're 99.5% genetically identical. Mm -hmm. So we are more similar than different. Yeah. But we always focus on what's different mm -hmm. because we're told that. So this book is designed to give people tools on how uh, they can foster that honor between uh, people who don't look like them, who have nothing, nothing in common with them, so they think. How's that message? Uh Hit people. People open to uh, it. I am, like it. I am so excited and so optimistic. I know as as divisive as our culture is, I believe the devil has overplayed his hand mm -hmm. and that people are tired. I have had nothing but positive reception because people want to heal. They want to get along. People are tired of the division. They're tired of the, and the fighting and the tension and the us first them mentality. And so the, the reception to the book and to the message of the book has been overwhelmingly positive. Okay. And, and what's ironic is that people from black, white, Hispanic all have the same exact reaction f verbatim. Everybody needs to hear this. <laughs> we, <laughs> you know, because yeah, yeah, yeah. we want to get along. And I, I want to give the country hope because, I, you know, if you watch television, you have to understand television. Uh, the media, it makes their money on division. Yeah. And so as long as we're fighting, they make money because there's mm -hmm. story, there's drama. Mm -hmm. But we don't have to fight. We yeah. don't have to play into it. And do you get a lot of people that say, you know, in, in my circles that I run into, uh, the people that I deal with, I get along with, with all races. But man, when I watch TV, it just looks <laughs> like we're just at each other's throats. Yeah. Is that common or is that just me? It, it, it's common and trust me, there is a lot of racial division in the country and there is a lot of um, uh, um, anger and resentment. But I believe that people, if they get in the room and they look at each other and they say, are you good? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can yeah. we be good? Yeah. I, I saw a picture the other day. It was a group of white supremacists and black protesters um, uh, a group of black men uh, protesting, whatever, they were they were uh, against each other. When I say against each other, they were physically meshed with each other, but in the very middle was a white guy and a black guy hugging each other. <laughs> and the caption said, why do you hate me? <laughs> and it was so encouraging yeah. because they, was, they were making a statement, mm -hmm. we don't have to do this. Yeah. Um, I think the biggest, biggest aha I got right in this book, which is probably needs to be really understood by your viewers, is that even though there are some people who are racist, most people will say they're not. 
But the truth of the matter is the third option is that we're all biased. Mm -hmm. And that you can be racially offensive and not be a racist. This is very, very important because people a lot of times can't separate those two things. If I offended you, that must mean I'm a racist. Mm -hmm. And no, you, you could offend me out of complete ignorance, mm -hmm. uh, innocence, and you're nervous. You, you said something that you were taught was innocent, but, it, but someone took offense to it. And because if people can't separate being racially offensive to being a racist, they will never admit they're offensive. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they'll never learn. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they'll keep doing what they do. Mm -hmm. And they won't ever be able to get into a dialogue with someone mm -hmm. about how to change because mm -hmm. they don't think they have to change. People can be racially, all of us, I was talking to someone here in Texas, who were here in Dallas, and this woman was from East Texas, and she had an accent oh. like that, <laughs> right? Right? Yeah, right? And I was teasing her. And, you know, she's 87 years old, so we were just joking around accents. Right. She could have taken offense. Now, I don't believe she did, she, but she could have easily been offended by that. That wasn't my intent. Yeah. And so we say things and we do things that someone might take an offense, and if we can accept that to be true, then we can learn. Mm -hmm. Then this book will help help know how to communicate to people, help us understand why we see things the way we do, what are our blind spots are about what we don't know about ourselves, what we don't know about other people. And this book is designed to give people tools and empower them to be more honoring of other people as human beings. Being raised in Texas, um, I found early on that there were some terms that I heard as a child that I, I had no idea how offensive they could be because right. the people who used them weren't racist. Right. But man, when you call somebody a cotton picker or something <laughs> like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there was a point in my adult life where I went, whoa, 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 whoa. what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. no, you, that's just, you know. And so a lot of the, and I think a lot of people are realizing that, but you know, it's funny because my kids will correct me. They'll be like, ah, you can't yeah, I'm yeah. like, what did I say? Yeah, exactly, exactly. What did I say? I have no idea what I said. One of the things you do, and, and this, this takes up a good portion of your book, and I was just, I was kind of laughing, frankly, reading it, is you had people. Laughing in a good way. In a good way because I've been there. Yeah, yeah. You had people go and be the only them yes. in the group. Yes. The only white guy in an all black church. Right. Right? Or the Asian, Hispanic, right. whatever. But to go be the only one. To be the other. The other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why'd you do that? Because I thought it was, that was yeah. powerful. Um, people put themselves in groups, and your in group are the people who are like you, and your out group are people who are not like you. And it, it could be like you in color, it could be like you in profession, mm -hmm. it could be like you in gender. And when you are in your in group, you experience in group bias. People who are like you give you better treatment than people who are not like you because mm -hmm. you don't know the people who are not like you. And so someone said to me, you know, you need to get over this race thing. And I said, you probably spend a lot of your time in your in-group, mm -hmm. surrounded by people who are like you, who think like you, who give you the benefit of the doubt. You're probably not ever around too often people who are not like you, who are suspicious of you because mm -hmm. they don't know you. So I challenged this person, I challenged six people, to go someplace where they would be the only white person to experience what it likes to be a minority. Because minorities are around people other, other than them all the time. Right. And so four went and two did not. <laughs> uh, one lady went to a, a black church, another guy went to a barbershop, um, and two guys didn't do it at all. They were scared. They literally said, I'm, I'm not doing it. I, I can't run fast. I don't, <laughs> you know, I, it's gonna be dangerous. And, and, it, and it, was, it was really kind of embarrassing. Yeah. Um, but it was it was to feel what it's like to be the other because right. what happens when you're around people who uh, are not like you, you're less comfortable and you're and you're less you're not treated as well in general as if you were pe or being around people who are like you. Or, or sometimes you just because of your own lack of comfort, you think you're not exactly treated as well. Your mind starts to play games with you. They did this because of this. Right. They looked at me and were thinking this. We could never know that. Yeah. And, and so now you know what it's like to be on the other side. Mm -hmm. And imagine living like that every single yeah. day, yeah. going to work every single day, and everywhere you go, you're the other. Uh -huh. What that will do to you, mm -hmm. the stress of that. Yeah. Um, and so that was an important, important point and experience. And in the book I have 
a list of questions these people asked, answered, like what did they feel like when they went, mm -hmm. what did they learn? The biggest question for them was, did what you fear would happen, happen? <laughs> All of them said no. Mm -hmm. Had that ever happened to you in your life? No. So here's this fear that these people are gonna do something to me that's never happened to them and it didn't happen to them, but it's still a fear. Mm -hmm. Uh, we all have a social narrative, a story through which we see the world, and it's based on how we were brought up and what we were taught, like you were told, here's these words to say. Mm -hmm. Well, when we're young, we learn things about people, but it's not always true. It's, a lot of times it's based on room or, or one experience. And so we have this view of the world, and this book is gonna help people step back yeah. and say, how do I really need to see people the way God sees them yeah. and honor the, the, the humanness and the value of their humanity the way God would want me to do that. That's what this book's for. Yeah, yeah. and I, I think I've learned to appreciate culture. I love yeah. other people's cultures. Yeah. It's fascinating to me. And I don't think we should wash over that or deny that. We should celebrate that. Yeah. Right? Last question for you. I've been waiting to ask you this one. Because I have been, I have been told you're white, you, you can never understand. Or you're a man you can never understand. You're whatever I actually am, therefore you can never understand, and I've kind of thought, well, then what's the point? Yeah. But I don't believe that. What do we do with that attitude of, of you can never understand because you're not, you yeah. haven't had that experience, you haven't been there? Yeah, um, I could never understand what it means to have a baby. Right. That's a fact. I'm not a woman, I'll never have a baby. However, it doesn't mean I can't love women, doesn't mean I can't serve women, doesn't mean I can't learn from women, mm -hmm. doesn't mean I can't partner with women. There's so many other things to do. And me, I don't need to have, to be pregnant nine months and to give birth to a baby, go through labor in order to have empathy for a woman and understand things about a woman. Um, I'll never understand what it means to be a white man because I'm not. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what that means. So what's the point? <laughs> the point is that I have something to learn from you yeah. as you have something to learn from me. Right. Your job is not to be me. Right. Your, and my job is not to be you. But can we learn from each other and encourage each other in things we don't know? Uh, that's why we need each other more than ever is right. because we need to share each other's experiences with each other. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, you're not, you, you'll never know what it's like to play, play, play in the NFL because you haven't played in the NFL. Right. But that doesn't mean you can't, I can't share with you some of those experiences that yeah. you can't enjoy it. Yep, because he has played in the NFL, <laughs> by the way. I didn't mention that. San Diego Chargers. Uh, well, okay, we could keep going on, but you've got a show to do. Yeah. Uh, it's a Life Today, a broadcast show. So let's just throw people to the website to check out your book because I really think it's that important. Yeah, they can go to uh, at milesandfierce.com. They can go to um, Amazon just buy the book. Right. That, that's the best thing. Go to Amazon and buy the book. Um, but don't buy it. Don't even just read it. Do it. Every chapter has three next steps mm -hmm. because I want to lead people on a journey where they can start to understand what they need to know to honor other people better. And by the way, it's not just white to black, it's every nationality, yeah, right. uh, everybody in, in your world mm -hmm. that you'll ever meet, these principles apply to everybody for everybody. So just go to Amazon and get the book. And we all know someone that we need to buy it for them, right? <laughs> buy it for yourself first, and then, yeah, and then buy it for somebody else. So get two, yeah, right, get two, right. that's right. All right go, go check it out and check out Miles McPherson when he's on Life Today. You can see that at lifetoday.org. Thank you for watching and sharing this interview. Be sure to check out the social media for Life Today Television, and you can connect with me on Facebook and Twitter. And if you haven't already subscribed or followed this channel, do it now so you can see more of our great guests.